Hi everyone, this is Carmen Arison from the Strathmore Library and I'm here to teach you about acrylic paint pouring. Specifically today, we're going to be going through the strainer pour technique. Now before we get started, there's a few th th housekeeping things we need to go over. When working with paint pouring, you need to realize that we are dealing with an excessive amount of paint and runoff onto the canvas. So when you decide where you're going to do your paint pouring project, make sure that it is in a flat surface that you can cover with garbage bags or a drop cloth that you can then potentially leave your piece for about 24 hours. Each paint pouring project takes at least a minimum of 24 hours to fully dry, or at least dry to the, to the place where we can move it. And that's something to quite keep in mind when you're working with paint pouring. Number two, gloves. We have two pairs of gloves that are provided to you in the kit. With working with acrylic paint, uh, it does wash off of your skin very easily. It's not super toxic, so getting it on the skin is not necessarily an issue. I just simply find that when I'm working with acrylic paint or any kind of paint, I just want to be scrubbing all of that paint off of my fingers. So we have provided those gloves for you. And number three, when working with acrylic paint, although it will wash off of our hands, it stains clothing. So you want to make sure that before you start any mixing or preparing your supplies, that you have a good apron on that will protect your clothes. That is to protect your clothes. Now, we're preparing our surface. We've given you some Dixie cups, and what I'm showing you here is you need to prop your canvas up in order to allow the paint to flow off freely off the edge of the canvas. So you're going to take your four Dixie cups and you're going to place them on each corner of your canvas to lay your canvas on top so that you do have that dripping mold. But for this video, I'm taking the cups off just because I'm, I'm not worried to protect my canvas on any at all. So um, for this video, I'm simply doing that. Now, while uh, your canvas is propped, you're going to grab your bottle of Floetrol, of pouring medium, and you're going to pour about half a cup, about maybe about a third a cup uh, in each cup. You have three cups. So yeah, you just want that to be an even amount in each cup. And with the canvas that we've provided you today, um, this will be an adequate amount of uh, paint. I'm using my bottles of paint here, and you're going to notice as I'm mixing my paint that some of my paint is a little old, so there is dried paint uh, goo in some of my paints. So unfortunately, I didn't realize that when I was recording this video. So you'll notice me picking out uh, dry pieces out of my paint. Now for each, each paint, you want to put your paint color in and you want it to be thin, uh, but not too thin. Uh, the idea is you want to be able to show that definition in your colors when you're pouring your paint um, through the strainer. So I would say kind of between thick and thin, a medium consistency is probably your best bet. And as I'm stirring, you can stir aggressively in your cup. You just want to make sure that your, your cup is fully uh, mixed with the pouring medium. So you just want to make sure that it's all completely mixed up so that it's all one solid color. The white, it doesn't seem like it's too bad because, you know, the pouring medium is already a natural white. Um, it just depends on what color you're, you're, you're mixing. So I'm using, uh, there's going to be this blue here. I believe with this blue one, I had a lot of issues with dried paint trying to come out of the nozzle. So just excuse my little moments while I'm trying to clean this uh, nozzle here. This is kind of what happens sometimes with acrylic paints. If you've 
you've been storing acrylic paint for quite some time, uh, you definitely find that uh, that the paint will so, will just start to dry inside the bottle, and that can be quite frustrating when you're trying to mix your paints. So, so that is one thing that uh, just keep in mind when you're when I'm mixing this. You won't have to deal with little little paint chunks like I'm showing you now. So you simply just want to, your paint is going to be nice and fresh and new, so you really shouldn't have to deal with paint chunks. But just gives you just even a good look at sometimes what uh, artists deal with when they uh, have excessive amounts of paint sitting in their house. So yes, as I'm mixing here, I'm giving it a good mix. The, the flow of all or the pouring medium is mixing very nicely and with the color you definitely want to make sure you're scraping down your sides and you're mixing right to the bottom of your cup. And the great thing about paint pouring is honestly this this type of medium is is quite simple and quite fun to play with that it really quite I, I describe it to to when I was a child growing up and and playing in the mud and it kind of brings out that inner child in you where you just get to create and have fun and just sometimes get a little messy as well. So that's one thing to always be cautious about when you're working with paint pouring is this is a very messy medium to work with but with the messiness comes certainly a lot of fun in it. <laughs> so yeah, we're just mixing our red paint here. And I believe there's a little pause here because I've, I've changed my gloves because I had so much blue from the previous color. And if you have any colors that, that you wanna use that, that maybe we didn't provide you, I know we don't have pink, um, simply just add some white and red together and that makes you a pink. So have fun with it. If you want a real solid purple, then you can mix your, your blue and your red together and that will give you a great purple. Would you like orange? You can simply mix the yellow and green together and that will produce orange. Or sorry, no. No, yellow and red together um, makes orange. So even though we've given you a very basic uh, color palette, this allows you, this gives you a chance to just play around with your colors and make your own tones and colors that you would like. Definitely struggling with paint pink goo here uh, with this my red today, so. There we go. All right. Keep mixing it up. All right, looks like my paint is all ready to go. Your canvas should still be propped up on top of the Dixie cups that we've go I've given you. So remember, one Dixie cup per corner on your canvas just this also helps for the it helps for the paint to flow right off the canvas because we're going to start to get very messy pretty quick here your canvases are white mine is um is black and this is just me simply reusing a canvas for my for my uh projects now you just want to pour a base color on the bottom like you're looking for a very very just a thin thin layer of paint on the bottom of your canvas and the reason we're doing this is that this is going to help the paint to flow on the canvas when we start pouring it through the strainer so that is one key factor in uh, paint pouring is that paint that canvas should be wet you're going to place your flower strainer right down the center of your canvas or wherever you would like to grow your bloom and then you're simply going to start working on pouring your paint into your bloom, one on top of the other, one at a, just and rotating your colors. And again, this is completely up to you, however you want that bloom to come out. This is just simply rotating the colors. And as I start to get more and more paint in the bloom, in the strainer, um, 
I'm going to start putting the paint further and further around the center of the strainer. And as you can see through the video and through, through what you're seeing on your own, you're going to start seeing that uh, the flower or the little bloom is starting to grow and those, those colors are starting to be more defined. See, even the even some paint pourers get messy. This is going to get messy. Now I'm putting it all around the center. And what that's doing is it's pushing it through the strainer. You, now you might think, you know, maybe I'll just use my kitchen strainer. What I have discovered is there are so many varieties of kitchen strainers that a person can use. But this one is is I find the best because it has those long slots, those long slots of um, going down the center uh, or going down the edges of the, uh, of the strainer. I find it works the best for doing paint pouring. I think we're just about to have all of our colors. You're pouring everything out because the idea is we want to spread that, that bloom as far out as possible. And depending on your color palette, you can certainly have some really gorgeous patterns developing right now. You're going to see some of the colors will start to mix. That's what also happens when you have your colors are sometimes a little bit uh, liquidy. The thicker your colors are, are mixed, the, the more defined you will see. All right, now, now that I've poured everything out, we're waiting for all of the paint to sort of sink in the bottom of your strainer. Now, I usually get impatient because I'm like, okay, well, it's gonna take a while for this to sink. But once you see it maybe about, it's only sitting about a quarter of the way down, then at that, or a quarter left, um, that's when you can slowly grab your your bloom and pick it up now you're going to see once you start to pick up that 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 strainer you're going to have to go very quickly off to the side and pull it off to the side so you can see i'm pulling it up slowly 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 pick up that strainer slowly and then once you know it's now released from the canvas you're going really quickly over so that you don't drip. And you see that beautiful little design in the middle. Now, uh, now you're just going to start, you're going to pick up that canvas by, right, the, pick up the whole canvas in your hands. And now you're going to start moving that paint around. And you see the way the paint is now flowing off of the canvas. This is what you want to happen. This is the reason why we have cups is that eventually you want all of that paint to flow right off that canvas as you work on your design. And as I'm twirling my design, I know in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know, I'm kind of, I did, I really like the center, center portion, but now I'm thinking, boy, I really like this other portion. So, so now I'm starting to focus well, Maybe I might start working on my design in a different way. Maybe I might take that center part right off my canvas. What do I want to do? Like I'm really pointing around an area that I just love. I'm loving this. But the center part, I'm going, I don't know if I want this anymore. So my goal now is I'm going to want to, I'm trying to try to stretch my canvas. And I apologize about the, the video technique here because it's just me trying to, now I'm I'm literally have my canvas almost upright as I'm moving that paint around the canvas. And I'm trying to get all of my corners. And now at this point, I'm like, okay, I have generally most of my corners done. Now I want the rest of this. I want this bloom to come off because I really love that design at the very top. So I'm, I'm literally draining that paint right off the edge 
and you can see all the paint on the bottom of my of my underneath and this is the other reason why you want those cups is that you don't want to sit that that paint that's now sitting on the very bottom of your canvas you don't want that to sit on your table because it will then stick to your table once it dries so you want to be able to have those cups that you could just lay lay that canvas right down on those cups and that is acrylic paint pouring so again just have a lot of fun with it play around with your designs um, remember this is going to sit sit for about a solid 24 hours and we definitely want this to uh, dry nicely so as much as the tempting tempting moments in your life where you're thinking i just might want to stick my finger in there to see if it's going to dry resist the urge because as an artist i can tell you the amount of pictures that i actually wrecked by going oh is it dry and i push my put my finger in there and it's not so leave it alone resist that urge but have fun with it all right, thank you so much for listening today and in, and going through this lovely tutorial on the strainer pour technique. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me at the library, 403-934-5440, or send me an email, carmen at strathmorelibrary.ca. I'd love to see your pictures of your products that you've made. And uh, yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.